Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I didn't upload for like a week and a bit. It's spring break right now, so I was just taking a little break from everything. A little rejuvenating week, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I'm ready to get right, right back into it with a really cool pen. So fountain pens as a hobby has been growing for the past decade or so, probably. And the vast majority of growth has been in modern offerings, modern pens. But fountain pens have existed for over 100 years, like 130, 140 years. And one of the big advantages to fountain pens in general is their longevity. So there's like an entire history of fountain pens that uh, is there to be explored besides modern pens. And modern pens really only scratch the surface of what the hobby has to offer as a whole. So with that being said, I understand maybe because of that, because there's so long of a history, it's kind of daunting to uh, foray into the vintage landscape, so to speak. And while this video isn't going to concern the whole landscape of vintage fountain pens in general, um, the most frequently asked question is, what's a good first vintage pen? And the most frequent answer is this, which is the Esterbrook J. And this video is to examine why that is, and give my thoughts on this pen and see if it really is that good first vintage pen for someone uh, making their first dive into vintage fountain pens. Estherbrook was founded in 1858 as a steel nib manufacturer for dip pens and it was only around 1920 when they started manufacturing fountain pens. You may have heard of modern Estherbrook pens such as the Estherbrook SD. Uh, that company has only its name to share with the company that made these pens um, and that's not the topic of this video. Uh, the Estherbrook Pen Company, this pen company, sought to mass manufacture a fountain pen that was affordable, durable, and, and practical. And out of those desires emerged a few pens, and one of them was the Estherbrook J. Now the pen is made out of colored plastic. I right here have the gray model, but it came in a lot of colors. It's a sort of thin thin pen with a long straight body that tapers down at the end, down at both ends, and at each end there is a black uh, jewel finial, they call it a jewel, and there's also silver trim, uh, metal silver clip, which is sturdy but, but it, it's useful, and that's paired with uh, silver trim as well. And on the body there is an imprint that says Estherbrook Made in USA. And opposite of that, on the other side of the body, is a lever. Now, this is a lever filler, which means that there's a latex sack inside of this pen. Operating the lever depresses a sack on the inside of the pen, and that expels the air out, and then put it in a bottle of ink, replace the lever, and then it returns to its former state, and it sucks ink up with it if it's in ink. As well as this, there is a black grip section and a steel nib. Now, a steel nib was unusual for all but the cheapest of vintage pens at the time, but Estherbrook was primarily a steel dip nib manufacturer for the majority of their history at this point, and their steel nib offerings uh, are much higher quality compared to most of that era. And uh, as well as that, another advantage of Estherbrook steel nibs is that they can unscrew from the grip section and can be exchanged. They called this their renew point system and it used both Durachrome, which was without tipping material, and Masterpoint, which was with tipping material nibs. This particular nib is an Estherbrook 9460 nib, which was a medium manifold nib, so like a firm medium nib. Four digit number codes were used for these nibs, and if it began with a 9, it was with tipping, if it began with a 1 or a 2, it was without tipping. So yeah, it's a very simple pen, honestly, there's no huge bells and whistles, which I guess is another advantage for, you know, being a first vintage pen. But yeah, those, those are the facts. So first of all, I do have to say, this pen is very attractive for what it is. It's well built, the material is nice, it's nice to look at, it's not super boring, but it's also not crazy in your face. The pen is light, it's a bit small, but I mean it's around the size of what most vintage pens were at the time, and it is relatively light, but it can post very well, and it's a really good writer in that sense for long writing sessions, say if you're writing a letter, writing notes, or anything like that, it's in my opinion very good for. 
And yeah, for writing, the nib is very smooth, it flows really well, and it's a joy to write with. Now, as for the filling system, yeah, it is a lever filler, so it has that latex sac in there, which means it's probably a good idea to use milder inks like um, Waterman or Mont Blanc, or the, at least the non-sheening diamine inks, just in case. I mean, as long as you're good about cleaning it out, uh, really no inks should be uh, an issue, but I guess it's generally considered good practice to use more milder inks like that. But yeah, it's really easy to fill. Just one operation of the lever and then you're good to go. Really quick to fill, easy to clean up. And while it is maybe not good as a everyday carry pen, you know, like jostling around in your backpack, because vintage pens in general show a little more propensity for leaking than modern pens, but it is good for everyday use if you, know, you, you take care of it a little bit, just make sure it keeps mostly upright. I've used it for school a lot. Uh, taking it to classes and stuff like that, and it's it hasn't been a problem for me. It's worked great. But yeah, speaking of putting it to use, uh, let's show you a little size comparison and a writing sample for this pen. Okay, and then for the size comparison, the Esterbrook J, it, here it is compared to a Leonardo Memento Zero Grande, a Sailor Pro Gear, and a Lamy Safari. So you can see it is a small pen, although most vintage pens were really quite small. Um, but it's still great for everyday use. Just like the Sailor Pro Gear, it's great in the hand like that. And then uncapped, it is pretty much... It's the same story. It is actually remarkably similar in size to the Sailor Pro Gear, so if you like the Pro Gear, or pens of that same size, I would definitely recommend the J. Alright, now let's get on to the writing sample. Okay, so first of all, of course, we're going to have to ink it up. Left this one uninked so I could show you how to fill it up. But it is really, really simple. You just take the lever, push it down, put your pen in ink, let the lever go, let it sit for a few seconds, and then you're good to go. Now we wipe it off. And we're ready to write. So here we go with the Esterbrook J. So yeah, well officially Esterbrook just called this gray. And then the ink is diamine raw Sienna. It's a pretty nice ink. Don't really have too many browns in my collection, but this one, I don't know, it flows nice. You know, it's a standard diamond ink. And then the nib is a Esterbrook 9460 nib. So, here we go. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. I don't know if you can hear it or lack thereof, but yeah, this is a very, very smooth nib. It's honestly quite broad. I think it's just that the tipping is kind of worn down over time. Because some... Okay, this is a debate for another day, but <laughs> I've seen a lot of nibs. I've worked with a lot of nibs. Some people say that the tipping doesn't wear down. It does wear down. It just does it over a long period of time. Um, there was a whole conversation back in the day with like, don't let other people use your fountain pen because, you know, they're going to wear the, down the tipping to their style and it's not going to write to your style anymore. And well, I don't think that's true. Um, definitely a lot of vintage nibs that are well used have a very significant flat foot, and this is no exception. I'll see if I can get a picture of that for you. Um, but still, I mean, it's a very smooth nib. It's just broader than I would say you would expect a medium to be. It's also slightly stubbish, but not too much. Yeah, it's just a great writer, and that ebonite feed does provide pretty good flow. 
as you can see. I mean, I did just fill it up, but um, I haven't really had any flow issues at all with this pen. I haven't really heard of flow issues with Estabrooks, and I mean, most vintage pens have great flow anyways. So yeah, and then this is a manifold nib, so there is really zero flexibility to be found, but it's still a great writing experience. So yeah, I would say that is how the Estabrook writes. But yeah, uh, that is the Estabrook J. As I guess you can probably see, its simplicity is kind of what gives it its strength in terms of being a good first vintage pen, because this is really all it is. It's a nice color body, you're going to get a good nib pretty much whatever you get, and it's just a simple lever filler. Great introduction to vintage. The real advantage of it is that it was mass produced, and many are still around today. Uh, of course the sacks from back then have long since ossified, um, but they are also some of the easiest pens to repair. It's really easy just to take it apart. Really, I haven't really heard of any actual lever filling systems like the J-Bar in there uh, breaking. But of course I completely understand if you don't want to try and repair pens yourself, because it does take um, a lot of time and material investment. But that's also one of the other advantages, is that these come up for sale already repaired quite often, like on Reddit, on Peyton Street pens, Anderson pens, what have you. I think that's also one of the reasons why it's such a great first vintage pen, is that it's really no fuss, you can just buy it restored and it's ready to write. And you can use it to figure out if you like what vintage pens have to offer. In terms of price, the color and the different types of nibs make it vary quite a bit. But usually for most options, anywhere from $30 to $65 uh, repaired, you can probably get them. I've gotten, oh man, I've gotten some of them for about $12 to $15 unrepaired on eBay. Um, although I, I'm quite sure that's not really the route most people want to go down because that's much more hit or miss. But yeah, for a good repaired one, between $30 $65. I think this one cost me around $30 $32. Um, but that came with a Duracrome nib, the one without tipping. And then this 9460 nib cost me around $15, $15 I think, extra. Uh, and for that price, I gotta say, it's a great offering. And if you're interested in vintage pens at all, I would, I would highly recommend the Esterbrook J. So I hope that provided a little insight on vintage pens starting out in the hobby and the Esterbrook J. And I hope you enjoyed it very much. So if you did enjoy it, I'd say feel free to like the video, leave a comment. Vintage discussion is always fun. Um, and yeah, I'll be coming out with some more videos like this in the future. So feel free to subscribe. And I hope you have a great day. Bye.